Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, guests, fellow candidates, party leader Roa. Welcome to District 22, Summerside, St. Elmer's. My name is Major Stewart. I'm the progressive conservative candidate in District 22 in the next provincial election. I'm pleased to be serving as your Master of Ceremonies today, and I will introduce our leader and then call him forward to speak. Following the leader's remarks, Mr. Lance will be available for media interviews. Rob Lance was born in Charlottetown, attended local schools before graduating from the University of Prince Edward Island and Holland College. Following graduating from uh, UPEI, Rob tried his hand at entrepreneurship, helping start a tree planting business that operated for several years doing reforestation projects in Kings and Queens counties. That business employed up to 25 islanders and planted more than 2 million trees. Early on, Rob recognized the power of technology. He understands how it will shape our future. Rob has always embraced new ideas and new ways of thinking. Following graduation from Holland College, Rob worked in the IT sector, spending 16 years with Deltaware Systems, a great island success story. There he led a team working in a fast-paced, high-pressure environment. He demonstrated a keen ability to multitask, think on his feet, to motivate people, work as part of a team, and to get the job done. Most importantly, working in IT brought Rob's problem-solving skills to the forefront. Rob is a proven community leader. He was first elected to Charlottetown City Council in 2006 and re-elected in 2010. And he quickly established himself as an able and innovative member of council, chairing the Youth Advisory Board, the Sustainability Committee, the Human Resources Committee, Police Services Committee, and for his last four years in council, the Challenging Planning and Heritage Committee. While serving on council, Rob oversaw reforms to the city's human resources policies, the creation of the city's first sustainability programs, modernization of the city's police services, and he spearheaded the introduction of major bylaw amendments with progressive new approaches to planning and community design. Rob's background in technology, along with his experience in the private sector, and in municipal government will give him a unique insight into innovative ways that we can take Prince Edward Island in a new direction. Ladies and gentlemen, our party leader, Mr. Rob Lance. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Happy to be back in Summerside today. I've spent a lot of time here over the last few months, made a lot of nice friends here. So I'm happy to be here. And, uh, Happy to be here with my fellow candidates, fellow Islanders, members of the media. Thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to be here for this announcement today. I'm also pleased to be here with Major and my fellow candidates for today's policy announcement. We've been hearing a lot about accountability lately. Accountability is defined as the obligation of an individual or organization to account for its activities, accept responsibility for them, and to disclose the results in a transparent manner. By that standard, our current government is not accountable to the public they work for. We have a gov government cloaked in secrecy and mired in scandal. A government lurching from one scandal to the next against a backdrop of debt and runaway spending. Not just fiscal mismanagement, but a level of fiscal mismanagement unprecedented in the history of Prince Edward Island. A government that refused to provide audited financial statements. A government that refused to table a budget. A government that won't give any, any explanation of the nearly $50 million in unbudgeted spending during the last three months. A government shielding transparency about the millions in loan write-offs done beyond the Auditor, Auditor General's reach. A government hiding information about the e-gaming scandal that has exposed the province to national embarrassment and exposed taxpayers to a very large lawsuit we've learned about today. A government that refused to hold a legislature sitting. A government that skirted its own fixed election date law to try and get ahead of the scandals that are consuming it. A government that releases public information to the public as a last resort rather than as a first instinct, a government that doesn't accept responsibility for its actions. Accountability is essential for fair and effective government. 
The resources of government must be respected and used for, for maximum public benefit. Greater transparency and openness is vital to good government. Islanders have a right to know what their government is doing on their behalf. That means the government must be prepared to explain its actions. Government has an obligation to explain. <laughs> Citizens can't effectively participate in the process if they're left in the dark, folks. A series of reforms in attitude, governance, and law are required. These reforms are needed to restore the public's confidence and to reset the moral compass of government. All of my candidates have signed an accountability pledge detailing the standard of conduct expected of all MLAs in our new government. Ministers in our new government will receive a mandate letter outlining my expectations as Premier for that portfolio. The mandate letters will be published online so the public has a benchmark by which they can measure our progress. Part of being accountable is leading by example. We will end the practice of providing the Premier and Cabinet Ministers with a taxpayer-funded vehicle and a credit card. I made that commitment from the very start. All expenses for Ministers, Deputy Ministers and senior political staff will be posted online monthly. Accountability is also about setting a higher standard. Our new government will enhance and more importantly enforce conflict of interest guidelines. Governance reforms are also needed. I've already announced a Royal Commission on Accountability in Government and this will be my first act as Premier. That commission will review the provincial nominee program, the e-gaming scandal, and government lending and loan write-off practices. Our open island reforms, announced on Monday, will use technology to give islanders more timely access to more information. Our open island reforms will rebalance the relationship between the public and public institutions. We will reform legislative committees to allow representatives of political parties to sit as committee members if their parties reach certain levels of public support. We will give the Freedom of Information Commissioner more resources and expand the Act to cover municipalities and post-secondary institutions. The Auditor General's Office will also be strengthened to carry out its work, its important work. The Public Service Commission will have a broader role in board appointments. Laws will be changed, new ones will be passed. Our fixed election date law will be amended and honored so it can't be skirted for partisan political advantage. <laughs> Timely audited financial statements will become the expectation, not the, ex not the exception. The Conflict of Interest Act will be tightened, laying out clear ethical framework for MLAs, deputy ministers, and independent officers of the Legislative Assembly. A lobbyist registry will be established. Whistleblower legislation will be passed to protect those who report wrongdoing. Yes. MLA pay increases will only take effect if the budget is balanced first. The least we can expect. This government's accountability deficit is staggering. Many steps are needed to close it, close this gap. Steps I've just outlined. Our party is proposing a new direction for accountability, one that Islanders can be proud of, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for coming today. I look forward to taking your questions. Thank you.